All right. I am making myself an office uh, because this room, uh, despite being probably the nicest room in the entire house, has uh, stood unused for quite a while and I've gotten tired of doing all my editing work down in the unheated basement where I'm uh, roughly freezing to death every day. So I took a trip to a charity shop today and I got my hands on a few of these. Uh, these are 200 by 90 a very beautiful dark wood uh, table surfaces. I've got no idea what they've been used for in the past uh, but I'm going to make these into my new uh, desk. Uh, they were very cheap at 100 euros for four of these and they are massive. They're so massive in fact that uh, it's going to be a bit of an issue fitting them all in this room. Uh, so the size of the room is uh, we've got uh, 280 centimeters, 2.8 meters across there and about four point something along that line. And my original plan was to have uh, just one going across that way and another going along that wall, uh, but uh, uh, 200 plus uh, 90 uh, is uh, more than 280, so that plan is instantly foiled. I simply cannot fit that without having uh, them intersect uh, at the expense of width for the one going across there, which is not what I want. I want that to be as wide as possible, and I would like that one to just slide in there in the gap, but no, sorry, that is not happening, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure something out. Uh, we've got a window and a radiator here, so I'd like to avoid that. Uh, I don't want to have uh, my monitors uh, there, nor do I want to have my monitors here, because that would give me awful glare when it's bright outside. Uh, ideal, I'd like to have my monitors there. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go think about this, and we'll see what I come up with. Oh yeah, and I have also taken a trip to the New Things store and uh, purchased a few of these uh, legs. We only had six in stock, so I'm not going to be finishing more than one desk uh, at the moment. They've ordered more, but these are just uh, rather cheap uh, 90 centimeter uh, desk legs. And my plan is to take a few of these uh, 90 centimeter uh, pieces of 2x2 two two and kind of make some kind of uh, main for it, something like that, it bears refinement, because I didn't want to have any uh, unnecessary stress on the very nice uh, desk surface. Uh, I'm probably going to make some like T-shaped things to mount everything to, uh, but uh, we'll see how that proceeds. I'll be back in a bit. And before we get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, this is what the uh, desk surfaces look like. Uh, uh, on the actual usable side, and uh, I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. Uh, it's obviously this one's veneered uh, fiberboard, but uh, it's done very well and they're in excellent shape for being second hand. And uh, that one is actually uh, made entirely out of wood, it's still veneered, uh, but it's backed, uh, it's uh, not veneered fiberboard, it's actually veneered wood. So this thing weighs a literal ton, probably the better part of 50 kilos, which is making me rather, rather happy. <laughs> 25 euros for that is a good deal. So that's uh, the one that's going to be the main desk and uh, this one's going to be the side desk, so to speak. All right, and I've got the legs mounted, rather the leg mount mounted. Uh, for this uh, tabletop I chose not to use any additional bracing since it's already got these cross braces and it seems to be extremely hard wood uh, on it when drilling. It feels like drilling into concrete so uh, I'm thinking this one's going to be okay as is so uh, the front uh, which was going to face the user is this end so where the legs are mounted slightly further in and wider apart to give maximum leg room uh, and on the rear they're mounted closer together and uh, as far out to the edge as possible to accommodate weight. So now I'm just gonna try and flip this over and get some legs on it and perhaps we'll have a desk today. Ah, there's the first desk assembled. Uh, so. Uh, seeing it like this uh, completely destroys my plans of having them 
uh, over there because they are way too high to work comfortably with the uh, slanted roof. Uh, also this did not turn out at all as sturdy as I had hoped for. I was fearing that it was going to be a bit rickety, but it is uh, considerably rickety since there are no really uh, big cross braces on the legs. So. Uh, despite these legs being uh, heavy due to what they are, uh, this thing does have a tendency to scissor and move around. Uh, but uh, that can be resolved by just having it mounted close to a wall. And uh, uh, I'm basically now confined uh, to having the desks along that wall. Uh, that wall is just over 400 centimeters wide, so I can fit two side by side and have all this uh, space here free uh, and also without uh, covering up the door also would just do them along this wall to have some nice window light from behind uh, so I'm going to have to get some curtains for that uh, that's no biggie, I must just put some tin foil over them like I've done in my bad bedroom uh, so it's no biggie but it means I'm going to have to uh, scratch all this stuff rather early on uh, I'd hope to be able to wait with that uh, for the future, but safer wardrobe are gonna have to go. Alright, moving forwards. Man, does this horrible lamp make that table look good? Anyway, uh, moving on to the next one, which as you can see uh, doesn't hold anywhere near the same build quality. Uh, this is uh, some kind of uh, still very hard fiberboard, but still fiberboard, uh, and it doesn't have the double ridge around the edge as the uh, fancy one has. So I'm thinking of building a an a H frame like so on it uh, in order to make it a bit more rigid. You can see how it over, over time has actually deformed somewhat. You can. You've got a bit of play there. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to be a major issue. Uh, however, the more interesting thing is uh, I've pretty much figured out that the only sensible solution to uh, getting these desks in this room is uh, to just have them basically cover that entire wall uh, opposite the window that also gives us the single double power outlet right between them excellent uh, but I've, what I figured I'd do since uh, I've only got two more legs for these is I'd actually uh, bolt that one to the wall uh, I'd measure up the uh, rough height it needs to be and just bolt one of my 90 centimeter 2 by 2s uh, on there and uh, have that rigidly mounted and uh, that is uh, in part due to me wanting to have it done today and in part due to the fact that uh, just having these free floating makes them so rickety I'd have to have some much fancier more expensive uh, legs uh, in order to make these stand st sturdy and since I've already made it and put value money on these, so I'd rather not do that. So, just having this one free floating does still give me some freedom to rearrange and put it at an angle if I want or something. Uh, and uh, having that one tied rather rigidly to the wall uh, provides that extra sturdiness, which uh, is uh, very uh, welcome on, you know, a desk. So I think I'm going to go about doing that, I'm going to add some glue to the seams around here because they're kind of coming apart a little. God knows how old these things are, they've clearly been through several lives already, this one having had uh, some kind of desk foot mounted to it previously. Uh, but I'm going to do that, I'll get back to you. Alright, so there we have the wall mount mounted. So it's just to... Uh, two pieces of the 2x2 uh, two two, uh, bolted together uh, two screws holding the top piece uh, on there and that one's just to prevent the, board, the table from moving in that direction obviously the main weight is going to rest on the big piece there and the uh, uh, size difference allows me to adjust the table out uh, a little bit uh, it's adjusted to about the middle of the extension of the a table legs, so I should have a reasonable shot at getting this straight uh, once I put uh, two legs in this end of the table, and that should meet up perfectly with that one. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, do a similar leg arrangement as that one there, 
uh, just in case I ever get four legs for this, which I probably should for future sake, uh, uh, then I'll be able to make two identical tables. And there we have it. Desk half number two. Legs perfectly matching the other ones. And you can see my mechanism turned out absolutely perfect. The gap here is uh, providing just a little bit of friction so it doesn't rattle around. I have to bang it back and forth to get it to move just how I wanted it, better than I expected it. <laughs> uh, and uh, it does allow for some adjustment room away so I can get some cables and uh, above all extra CRT space back there. These are uh, discs are only uh, 90 centimeters deep after all. So that's turned out absolutely excellent. Uh, you can see the other legs mounted identically to the uh, other desk. And uh, what's even better is uh, I got the height adjustment absolutely perfect because this side is intended to be ever so slightly higher than that side when the legs are fully adjusted down. So now I'm just going to adjust the legs on both discs to be straight and flat and then we're going to be moving on with the moving in basically. So one of the first orders of business is going to be getting rid of that thing. Uh, awful incandescent uh, spotlight thing. Now I'm thinking of just moving one of my uh, shooting lights up here, 80 watt uh, CFL, and just hanging it above there to give uh, some illumination right above the desk and perhaps replacing that thing with uh, some kind of uh, more ambient light, something which shines upwards perhaps. But I'm going to have to think about doing that. Uh, right now, desk adjustment time. All right, and there we have it. Perfectly straight. Straighter than a 50s American guy. Yes, sir. So I've clamped uh, the two boards together, just using wood clamps, uh, uh, perhaps, until I can get something more suitable. I don't want to uh, cut him this nice uh, uh, wood in, unless I have to. So clamping works rather well. And I've also installed uh, this little thing here uh, because uh, the rickettiness of the uh, fancier desk here did show through in that axis but uh, just having that thing there makes everything absolutely rock solid since uh, it prevents uh, movement in that direction very very well and uh, we have the wall mount there preventing movement in any direction but in particular of course perpendicular to the wall, so this is very sturdy. Very sturdy indeed. So let's give it a bit of a uh, safety check. Do I feel safe doing this? It doesn't feel too bad. be doing worse. So, I think I'm going to call that a night for this time. I still need to clean this thing up properly. And then I'll have to see into getting a more proper light for this room and what the hell to do about this sofa. Uh, we've got, for some reason we've got a lot of sofas and a lot of beds in this house, even though we're like three people living here. It's weird. All right, one sanity check later. I've figured out that I've made this thing entirely wrong. Uh, so the legs I got were about 90 centimeters tall, and that is uh, the desk compared to my chair at its highest possible position. And as you can see, that is a rather uncomfortable height difference to that. Uh, so today, I got some new legs of a more sane height, a much more sane height, and uh, well, I'm just going to be swapping these out. So these are uh, 71 centimeter legs, which uh, adjust up to about 74 at most. So this is going to be a, 
roughly 75 centimeter disc which uh, generally feels pretty comfortable to me uh, rather than 90 ridiculous <laughs> uh, that's silly that is silly ah that's much better a um, far more sane uh, height of uh, about 75 centimeters has made all the difference you can see how well the uh, armrests of a chair line up now so it's pretty much in the same state as it was before, I made it to a wall, it's rather sturdy and nice. So, finally I can move on to the rest of the room. So after taking a, a considerable moment to fill this leaky 50 year old tap up with Teflon tape, in order to stop it peeing everywhere, uh, I have brought a light uh, this is one of my studio lights. I've fitted it with a, a free-facing Kelvin tube and we're going to be mating it uh, pretty much across there. So it shines right down at the desk. Uh, the main for this thing uh, I intended for more office style installations where this is an M6 thread which you, you're supposed to screw onto something. Uh, so in order to mate this to the wooden roof, I, roof ceiling I've made these little uh, mains by just uh, grinding up some ventilation mating stuff. That turned out pretty cute. So you can just uh, put an M6 there and thread that on once I've mounted this to the ceiling. So I'm just going to use the laser on the tripod to draw a straight line there, measure the width of the light fixture and we'll be good to go. The lace has been lasered and we now have a light in our ceiling. It turned out to rather nice, I do think. Uh, the mounts work a treat. These white boards are rather thick, so I had to use some very long screws to mount it, but this is not going anywhere. Sitting very well in place. So it is shining. It is slightly uh, behind the edge of a bench. Uh, well, Oh no, it's pretty damn well straight above it and as you can see very straight from the shadow so it's a reasonable it does not provide quite perfect illumination there and all the way, way over in the corner there so uh, I might move the light and perhaps uh, all the way as far as it'll go over there to just uh, kind of uh, give some light priority to this bench uh, I'm uh, since I'm planning on having my computer stuff over there, uh, there's going to be not a whole lot of need for very bright uh, paperwork or light. I'll just be having like a few LED strips going to provide some background lighting while I'm wasting my life on the internet. Uh, that's about it. I'll be meditating about how to actually set everything up once I get moved in here. It is a bit, even though this uh, bench is giant, uh, it is going to be a bit of a challenge fitting all my stuff. Most since I want to use my Philips MFB 541 speakers and my Barker CRT monitor at once. And uh, those guys hate each other. You can't put the Philips speakers anywhere close to the Barker monitor or it'll go all rainbow colory CRT close to magnety. So I'm really thinking about a layout and uh, in my previous setup I've had the barcode sitting right in the middle, I've been using it as my main monitor and even doing web browsing on it, uh, gaming and so forth, uh, which has worked rather well. Uh, but I'm considering, uh, since I've got that BenQ monitor now, uh, to kind of uh, uh, demote the barcode from the main monitor position and just shove it right as far away in the corner there as I can get it uh, just for the occasional color proofing use uh, that way I could probably fit uh, my speakers reasonably well something like that and I can have a 27 and 24 inch monitor basically uh, within the speakers or perhaps even above the speakers I didn't mind myself a high monitor I used to have my monitor mounted extremely high for the longest time and it uh, worked wonders on my back uh, but I'll have to think about that. I've also got my giant stereo to think about, which is either going to have to go kind of there-ish, 
or kind of there-ish, which would uh, absolutely separate the two benches into two, since it's just such a giant footprint, the Locksman L120A. Uh, third option is to just have it on some little table or tray on the side. It would, would have been very sexy to actually have a little AV tray there where the legs are, but uh, that's uh, not going to happen since obviously the legs are there and I'm not going to bother uh, building some kind of custom main shelfy thing because I've already purchased the legs. Uh, decisions, decisions. I'll get back to you. At least we are now enlightened. So, with most of the uh, room stuff uh, out of the way now, uh, we're starting to, uh, we have to start thinking about the more practical moving in stuff. And, uh, of course, most of this room is going to be dedicated to computering, and this is one of my monitor mains. So I've got two of these, and as you can see, it's a very uh, simple design. It's just a bar. Uh, they ship with a clamp in the end, which is uh, not big enough to clamp onto either one of my 2x2s two or the desk. So I'm going to have to manufacture some kind of a more proper main for this. So what I'm thinking is using two of these 2x2s two and basically making a monitor stand sandwich. Like so, uh, a bit more symmetrical, though. and just having a uh, drill like uh, three or four holes along the width to allow me to put my monitors wherever I want them to and bolt these to the actual wall. Uh, because I uh, previously I have uh, down in the workshop, uh, I've just drilled into the bench and uh, had a bolt going through. Uh, holding the monitor main to the bench, but uh, uh, for one that's not very stable since the diameter of the pipe is just four centimeters. Uh, the momentum, momentum, the torque of the monitor trying to weigh everything down, it just makes everything kind of wonky over time. And of course, I, I'd rather not make holes in this. It's, it just feels like a shame to make modify these big beautiful surfaces into anything other than b big beautiful surfaces. So, that's the plan. I'm going to go downstairs, just drill a few holes if my drill battery keeps up, and then we're going to have a little sandwich, probably something around there, because I kind of want to stay uh, kind of on that side of a big leaning thing. It's going to feel a bit cramped otherwise, sitting, you know, Looking at that all day. This room really isn't that big. That's the wall, and that's just 90 centimeters tall, so I really don't want to squeeze too far in. And there it is. Uh, probably one of the most basic wooden constructions you can imagine. I've just uh, drilled a few holes there for possibly mounting uh, the monitors to give a bit of flexibility as to where I put them. And uh, I've drilled a few holes the other way to mount it to the wall with some rather large screws. Uh, so the fear of operation for uh, moving the monitors a bit uh, is that uh, these are mounted with an M8 uh, threaded bolt going through there. And uh, if I want to move these, uh, I've drilled 9.5mm holes, which allows me for some uh, amount of movement. So if I just undo the top there, uh, if I undo the top bolt and in the final installation there's going to be no bottom, I can just join them out like that, move them and hook them back in, which in theory should work rather well. Uh, if in practice I actually have enough slack in the construction to uh, manage that movement without ripping everything apart is another story, but uh, we'll, we'll just have to see. If I can't move them easily it's not really that big of a deal, I'm pretty sure as to how I want them mounted anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to make bolts of it straight to the wall somewhere around there. And there it is mounted. Uh, so it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it isn't on straight and it should support the weight of the monitors. So moving these stands around in my intended way it wasn't really feasible. 
uh, without cutting some new tabs out and uh, I can't be bothered. These are just so long that they the moment I try to tilt the tilt the stick it would just uh, lock onto uh, the, the threading in these so uh, I opted to use some uh, like 5.5 centimeter long the hex head bolts I found in a random bag lying around and these just about reach into uh, the bar so these are very easy to remove and uh, they mostly just need to support the uh, horizontal load anyway the vertical load is obviously handled by the bars mostly the bottom one so I think it's going to be pretty good it feels quite sturdy indeed so now all we need is a couple of monitors speaking of monitors there they are well, that means I don't have a computer downstairs anymore so I had to actually remount the monitor mount because it turned out to be way far, too far to the left uh, for the barcode to get along with the speaker that's going there. So I had to move everything about uh, 30 centimeters to the right, leaving some lovely uh, holes in the drywall panelling. Uh, oh well. Uh, but uh, this is what we've got going right now. So as you can see, uh, it's mostly dictated by the length of this mount here. It's stretched as far out as it can possibly get in order to get a, as round a view of this as possible. And ideally I'd like to have this even a bit further out, but uh, it's already stretching quite a bit. Uh, I also uh, took the li liberty of uh, actually moving the desk quite a bit further in towards the wall. Uh, that's actually just uh, about uh, five centimeters between here now. Uh, that's because uh, the depth of the desk is sufficient. Uh, it seems to be, to, in practice, it seems to be even deeper than my old desk, which uh, I believe was uh, one meter deep, but I could be mistaken, it could just be 80. So we've, we've got ample room in front of the monitor, uh, the CRT barker here. So this is uh, roughly what's gonna be my view in the future. Color proofing monitor there. Main use hardcore gaming monitor there, and my 27 inch cheapo Korea 1440p there. And as you can see, they are lining up quite well. Uh, in an ideal world, I'd stack some stuff under the barker to get it up a bit, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't quite feel like having the 30 kilo CRT sitting on a bunch of books or something. Uh, so, now we're starting to really move into the uh, proper gear territory. I need to move my computer up here. I need to get some electrical wiring and stuff. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to deal with all the wiring that's going to end up. I've only got two power outlets here, so I'm going to have to run a million extension cords. Uh, but that's no worry. I'm also thinking about how to make my LED strips, which I've been using for a while. An idea that has sprung to mind is to just mount them on top of that uh, monitor mount there. But uh, they would become visible uh, to the naked eye, I believe. So there's a decent chance I just kind of, I don't know, mount them behind the monitors or something to uh, illuminate the wall behind me. Because I, I've been having an illuminated wall behind the monitors for a while and it's uh, very nice on the eyes uh, in the darkness of the night when you're Brazing the internet. Uh, decisions, decisions. Either way, it's bedtime. Uh, there, it's empty. That was Buffer Spin, my desk. Since age immemorial. We even got the channel logo cubic space there for a sec. And I'm gonna give the stereo some attention, take it upstairs, and then this. Just a whole bunch of random shit to dig through. And here's some proper nerdery. So this is all the wiring for one single single input stereo. So what's, what we've got going on here is I've got this EQ connected up uh, to a tape loop which is then looping back to another input on the stereo. So we've got uh, uh, this input going to the stereo, the uh, aux jack, and then we've got uh, this one 
going from a tape loop out to the EQ, then EQ back into another input on the receiver. And well, this is just redundant. You go away right now. And that's how you end up with six input wires to run two channels. And speaker outputs. This has been connected up like this for such a long time. I don't even remember when the last time I touched any of this was. I mean, jeez. That's just... That's a bit grime even for me. And because I for once have a chance to actually uh, get my hands dirty on my Luxman L120A, uh, I've taken it apart. It has a bit of a dicky uh, speaker relay to it, which I'm going to clean up and perhaps put a smaller relay in parallel with in order to give a bit of a better low load uh, connection. Uh, I love the look of this thing. All hand rates and have gone to the effort of actually putting this lovely piece of copper in there to shield just a bit extra. Uh, there you can see my hand-picked, hand-matched uh, 8-bit transistors. These were exploded when I got it. That's because it had bad caps from uh, 30 years of use at the wrong grid voltage. Whoops. Uh, but let's just get it fixed. It's been dead reliable ever since I got my hands on it. Oh wow, yeah. No wonder this relay wasn't working right. Just look at the amount of crap which was stuck on the contacts. All of that and plenty more was just jammed in between those contacts there. So I'm waiting that I'm not going to have to bypass this. I'll just uh, put it back as it is. It's gold plated and nice now. Looking fine. And that's going to have plenty of time left to live. And yes indeed. If we slowly turn the voltage up until the relay just about clicks, bam, 0.13 ohms. And that's the same for both contacts. So this relay is doing very well for itself. Time to get this thing back together. And there we have it. Good as new. Most of all just come off a factory floor. I really cherish my Luxman gear. Ah, and there we have a good old computer. This thing's been sitting down here for so very, very long. Finally it will be free from its shackles and moving up in the world. And while we're down here you can get a, a very unusual look at some of my energy saving devices because I don't like standby power. So, uh, this is one of them which uh, ironically draws a fair amount of power, but this is a uh, heating string, originally installed on a satellite dish, I got it for free, and uh, this is here because it gets so freezing cold down here, but I want to heat my feet and my desk area without having to heat the entire room, which takes loads of energy. So that coil has been sitting under my feet for a very long time, doing a very good job at keeping me from freezing to death. And a more sensible device is that extension cord there, which you can see has a bit of an extra lead coming out of it. And that's uh, just a relay choke coming through. And this thing just hooks straight to the 12 volt rail of my computer. And it turns on when the computer's on turns off when the computer's off, so I can automatically turn off monitors, stereo, everything, just hard off, zero watts standby draw as soon as the computer's off. And that thing's probably saved me many tens of euros over the years. Uh, that's a box full of cables and peripherals. And we're, <coughs> we're not even halfway done yet. Oh, there we go. This is real starting to shape up into something. Almost looking like a workable desk. The space on this place is absolutely gorgeously large compared to my old desk. Where the entire width of all of this was pretty much constrained to the width of the monitors. With speakers just shoved kind of 
where they could be fitted, but now I can actually have them at the sides, aimed at my ears. And the stereos fit just perfectly. Around there, one's up nicely with a monitor, which can just hover right on top of them. I'm starting to get excited. Uh, so one big downside of uh, moving the office upstairs is I don't, I will no longer have access to my solar system for that, uh, which is not a big deal since I was using most of my power in my workshop. But it does mean that I'm going to have to carry a UPS upstairs, and the smallest batteries I have are those guys. Uh, that's not going to be too much fun. These guys are 67 kilos and they're giving up two flights of stairs. And there we have an operational UPS. And uh, assuredly my older self is uh, going to pay for this with uh, considerable back problems, but uh, I'll do it for now. So I've got everything wired up. Uh, I've done uh, some improvements to uh, this thing since the uh, last it wasn't used back in the workshop uh, most notably uh, I constructed this uh, rather fancy fuse by just bolting two 100 amp APC fuses together fits perfectly in these batteries still needs to fetch a couple of covers to cover that up and that seems to be running rather well and I just finished bolting a couple of extension leads which I ruthlessly stole from the workshop uh, to bring here. So this one is uh, 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 unswitched, this is going to be UPS powered on all the time for stuff that's going to be running 24-7 and that one's feeding into the switching strip which is going to go to the PC. To imagine, this PC hasn't been out of that workshop since about 2000 and gosh 10 when I got it. Well the case anyway. And I'm just about to start wiring that up. And but that entails a lot of work up here. So I already got the amazing keyboard up, giving a bit of a deceptive look of completeness there. But I need to wire the stereo. And I have got some of this uh, cable ratey uh, stuff which I have avoided in the past because it keeps changing so much around my PC. But I'm figuring I'm, I might as well do it a bit properly and uh, just wrap everything getting up to the desk in a bit of this to clean it up a bit. But the biggest... It's going to be a bit of a mess. Getting all the wiring neatly to the monitor is going to be somewhat annoying. I need to get some cable channel to just run down there to do the do monitors uh, and the stereo. Well, that's pretty much concealed. Uh, the speakers are going to have a couple of wires just running straight back, which, well, this one can just have it go around and then off there, going underneath it. That's going to be rather tidy. CRT is going to look excellent. Uh, but yeah, those guys are going to need, well, no, I could just run the wire like so and down behind the stereo and I wouldn't have to look at it. Well, that's reasonable. And I need to figure out a way to mount my LED strips for backlight. I don't even remember if I made in a video segment about this, but this is some LED strip in which I've in the past had just lying behind my monitors and I find it looks best if I just have it lying loosely behind the monitors. So that's uh, how I'm going to keep it just running loosely all the way around there to give a bit of backlight for, whoa, that's that's some, that's some dynamic range. <laughs> but yeah, to give some backlight when I'm browsing the internet. Ah, but on to wiring uh, this thing up now, I believe. Oh, Alright, and yesterday I took a very quick stab at building some acoustic panels because this room sounds like absolute garbage. Uh, I didn't get any video of it since I built these guys in the fastest of hurries. But they are very, very basic acoustic panels. I just took some uh, scrap uh, uh, fabric stuff and uh, some normal fiberglass insulation and built a wooden frame around it, put some trash bags in the back. We've got uh, a, just a square frame going around and one board going up there. Most basic frame you could possibly have. All the fabrics just uh, stapled on 
and the insulation is kept in between. So I'm just going to figure out a way to mount these and hopefully this place isn't going to sound like shit after that. Oh, there we go. Acoustic panels all mounted. We've got those four there as well as this bitch to mount on the slanting wall there because that wall was uh, creating rather a nuisance uh, as well as a gaudy one right there behind me. And these seem to have uh, uh, solved quite a few of the acoustic issues. Uh, the stereo now has some kind of a base to it, uh, which is uh, more than it had before. Uh, it's still not a perfectly dampened room, of course, uh, since uh, I haven't covered anywhere near enough of the walls to achieve that, but uh, it certainly is performing quite a bit better. Uh, we are still lacking, however, damping in the ceiling, which uh, I was kind of hoping to get since uh, we do have large uh, uh, open areas of floor which is going to cause standing waves between the ceiling and the floor but uh, I didn't really find these panels suitable for ceiling mounting. I might, might do something about it in the future if I know myself I'm never going to fix it. I'm just going to be happy with the way it is. I really do like the way these two turned out. These are my favourites. Just sitting there. All nice and brain in the 70s. <sighs> really, I'm starting to take some shape. Alright, and I think we're starting to reach some kind of a useful form for this place. And so I've been using this for a couple of days now, trying to find out what needs to be fixed and what can stay. It's always a comfort thing when you i grab a new office, so uh, really this layout is pretty okay. I'm toying with the idea of taking that monitor and putting it there and raising that up stupidly high. Uh, that could be something because it, that monitor ends up rather far away since it's such a high DPI monitor. Uh, but uh, that's the uh, stuff I'm going to have to figure out as time goes on. And uh, uh, really this part of the office I'm thinking I'm just going to have as empty as possible. It's not for doing paperwork and uh, it's going to be a nice backdrop for taking images of like uh, stuff I've been working on, high-end amplifiers and so forth. Would look rather nice there. <sighs> and I have gotten the computer wired up rather neatly. There's some wiring job stuff left to do but I got one of those cable worms to stick and everything and yeah, I'm gonna buy some cable guides to main to the underside of the desk just to make it a bit neater around the, the wall there. This is going to be a nice neat setup in due time. But I think I'm going to uh, leave you with that because I've got way too much video of this to edit already. So I'll have to thank you for watching. Cheerio.